what's the point? Seriously, what's the point of me reviewing Chrono Trigger? There is nothing that I can say that has not been said by so many other people on the internet. So many publications. People who can write much better than me. People who can make much better videos than me. People who are all around more popular. People who everybody agree on. There is nothing that I can say. Oh, Chrono Trigger. It's one of the best SNES games of all time. Revolutionary 1995 for its multiple endings. The story. The absolute time-traveling factor that's put in. The multiple characters. The fact that one thing can affect from one region to another. I am not going to review this game, because I will just sound like a parrot. I mean, I wanted to review something other than another DS game, whether it be a remake or a new one. Just something else for the Summer Screenix before Sleeping Dogs comes out. But, looks like I don't have a choice now, do I? Neko, my boy, it looks like it's your turn. Well, hello there. I'm Kaz. You know, the mind said that we're all going to die in 2012. You know, they have a calendar, not like anybody else does. And their society is just thriving. It's about as healthy as Greeks' financial situation. But this title has absolutely nothing to do with Greeks. Instead, it has a similar theme. The world ends. With you. For the Nintendo DS. Because, you know, I haven't reviewed enough DS games over this freaking summer of Square Enix. But I guess one more can't hurt. You forgot about last time. Aren't we? The only thing you hear are the timeline shredded to bits as time itself unfolds. Okay, uh, no. We are not doing this. You're not going to be a character on this show, okay? This is not going to be where we add in different characters and just let it go along, okay? What are you talking about? Do you have any idea how badly video game shows have been damaged by this? I mean, just look! Sorry, Bob, I love your work, but you're always setting people to prove a point, and I'm trying to do the exact same thing, but what am I trying to prove it to? I'm talking to a poster! Seriously! By ignoring Chrono Trigger, the only thing you do is cause time itself to stop. Thus, the future shall refuse to change. Okay, three things, demonic poster. One. You are a piece of chemicals and paper, and I can rip you in half any time I want to. You're not a threat. Second, I have a knife, and I will carve my name in you if you say another word. Third thing? There is no third thing. I'm just gonna cut you a new one if you don't shut up and get off my wall. In many a timeline, you did just that. Unfortunately, this version of you seems far more... Stubborn. Thus, there must be an alternate way in order to let everything flow. Do what must be done. Okay, you know what? Well, there is actually one thing that I was thinking of, but... I don't think you guys would like it. Now, oh, well. Pixels or polygons, everyone? <laughs> Before you ask, yes, it's completely copying Doug Walker, aka the Nostalgia Critics, old versus new. I liked the premise and I decided to apply it to video games. That and Reboot or Retro was already taken. Anyway, here's how this segment is going to work. I'm going to take a classic game either from a series or from a game company overall and compare it to a recent installment to see which one of the two is a superior title. With that said, let's introduce the very first titles on this new segment. In this corner, weighing in at an average SNES cartridge, the time-traveling RPG from 1995 with the frog, Chrono Trigger! Originally released for the Super Nintendo, Chrono Trigger was revolutionary for the use of time travel and multiple endings that were caused by your decisions in the game. Save this character in one time period, you'll be able to do a quest in this one, etc, etc, you get the point. These mechanics, along with plenty of other small additions such as the battle systems, improvements from Final Fantasy VI and the multitude of colorful characters, are what make it one of my favorite RPGs of all time. And I'll admit, I did first play this game before I ever played The World Ends With You. 
Released in 2008, The World Ends With You is a radical departure from common elements in Japanese roleplaying. Utilizing the DS's two screens, The World Ends With You crafted a battle system like no other and told the tale of a game that was quite literally life or death. Both of these games are ranked near the top of my favorite video games of all time. Still, I must ask, which of the two is the superior title? Now let me make this one thing clear. I love both of these games. These are two of my favorites of all time. And this video, just like Clash of the Cartoons, is all opinion based. So if you agree or disagree with me, that's perfectly fine. Voice yourself in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys would think. That being said, let me answer the question that I know that all of you are thinking. Why am I not comparing Chrono Trigger to Chrono Cross, where it would literally be pixels or polygons? I gave it some thought of comparing the two since I began the Summer of Squinix. But, after giving it a little bit of time, I realized that there were two major reasons why I simply couldn't choose between the two. First and foremost, I never played Chrono Cross, and I couldn't get my hands on a copy at this time. Maybe I'll compare the two in the future, but for now, it just wasn't a possibility. Secondly, fans tend to hate or love the game, but the general consensus with Cross is that it just isn't as good or as important to gaming as Chrono Trigger was. That and I wanted to compare a more recent title, and The World Ends With You is probably what I'd consider to be their finest of the decade. So. Let's not delay any longer. This is Pixels or Polygons, Chrono Trigger versus The World Ends With You. Let's start off with the very first thing that you see in the games, the graphics. This is the best graphics. Now when it comes to graphics, the DS is obviously more powerful than the Super Nintendo. But it's not about which game looks better, it's about which game both pushed its system to the limits and is overall more appealing in terms of art style. Chrono Trigger was one of the most refined and polished games of the Super Nintendo and a shining jewel for presentation on the system. As for the art style, it's traditional Akira Toriyama, who you may know for his work on the Dragon Ball anime and the Dragon Quest series. And truth be told, I like his work in Dragon Ball, but I'm not a big fan of all of his work. It's good stuff, don't get me wrong, but it looks like he's just repeating the same characters from Dragon Ball over and over again. Of course, with a few exceptions. For example, let's look at the PlayStation opening. I know we're supposed to be just comparing the original version, but just for the sake of comparison, let's take a quick look. the opening to the Dragon Ball anime series. Pretty similar looking, isn't it? Also, Toriyama, does everything have to be with dragons? Dragon Boy, Dragon Ball, Dragon Quest, Blue Dragon. Seriously? Oh well, Corner Trigger is full of creativity, it's incredibly colorful, and has a remarkable amount of attention to detail during the dungeons. On the overworld map, characters are fairly small and lack detail, and I wouldn't complain about this except Square did the exact opposite in Final Fantasy VI, and that was released a year before. Characters on the overworld were the exact same as they were in battle, and in dungeons. Minor nitpick aside, the overall visuals for the Super Nintendo game are impressive, and there's an amazing amount of detail to the graphics and characters. It's near the top of the best looking Super Nintendo game, right near Super Metroid and Final Fantasy VI. As for the world's end with you, the graphics are crisp and fluid, showing out the DS's power like no other game in 2008, but while the 2D is great, it's not the best looking sprite based game on the system for <coughs> Risky's Revenge. That being said, there's a lot of creativity and flash to the characters, enemies, and attacks. I mean, there's a bear with triad symbols for arms. There's often a ton of things going on in battle, and it's impressive how much can get thrown on screen without a frame rate drop at all. And considering there's always something going on on the top and bottom screens, that's pretty impressive. Then of course, there's the art designer for The World Ends With You, Tetsuya Nomura. 
Tatsuya Nomura began his work designing monsters for Final Fantasy V, and would go on to design some of the most well-known characters for some of the most popular games of all time, like Parasite Eve, Kingdom Hearts, and of course, Final Fantasy VII. I enjoy most of his work, though with the world end with you, his work can be described as a Japanese manga. And by that I mean, characters are presented in a similar fashion to manga with a ton of expression, there's chibi references everywhere, and Neku himself has the typical spiky-haired protagonist look that you'd expect from Tetsuya Nomura. Not as ridiculous as the amount of gel that you need to make your hair look like clouds, but still you can tell the resemblance. Now when I first got my hands on the world end with you a few years back, I was not a fan of the manga anime Japanese style. But the more I played it, the more the style just grew on me, and the more everything just began to fit right in. The art style is very appropriate for the place, after all, the game literally takes place in some form of Japan, the city of Shibuya to be specific. And speaking of the city, there were landmarks from the town that are seen in the game, like Hachiko's statue and the subway station. Both of these titles are benchmarks for the respective systems, but the perfect match of the style and location, not to mention the excellent sprite work, are what pushes the world end with you just barely above Chrono Trigger. Point goes to the world end with you. Well that looks all fine, but which one sounds the part? This is the best soundtrack. The soundtrack to Chrono Trigger isn't just one of the most iconic in all of Square's history, it's one of the greatest soundtracks to grace any console in all of gaming history. It has anything and everything that you would ever want from a video game soundtrack. From the feel good melody, yet somber mood setter to even the creepy yet epic boss music really the music justifies itself much more than I can even sum up my own feelings about it Good work, Yasunori Mitsuda. You've crafted one of the most amazing and beautiful soundtracks to grace any console. So how does the world end with you compare to the legendary soundtrack of Chrono Trigger? Well, I'll tell you. Not exactly fairly. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the world end with you soundtrack, but it's really not a fair comparison at all. The music perfectly matches the tone and style of the game like the graphics do, using a funky J-pop soundtrack, but with the exception of Twister and Lullaby for You, most of the songs are pretty forgettable. They're good, but they don't stick with you like Chrono Trigger's does. It's kind of strange because some songs are played so much and become so irritating, yet they go in one ear and out the other. Yet some songs that are played so little just aren't that memorable because they just weren't that great. Even though that all the songs can be bought in-game, none of them are really must-haves that you need to spend your hard-earned yen over. It's just a neat little collectible. Nothing more, nothing less. Both of them have good sound effects, but little effects don't compare to the sheer mastery that is the Chrono Trigger soundtrack. But to be fair, very few soundtracks can even compare to Chrono Trigger's. It's almost unfair to expect it to be on the same level. Again, love both game sounds, but it's pretty hard not to like Chrono Trigger's more. It's quite literally, well, timeless. Yeah, it's cheap pun, but a point well deserved goes to Chrono Trigger. So that's it for part one. We ended with a tie, but tune in for part two coming soon, where we'll compare the meat and bones of the games, the story, and the gameplay. Until next time, game on, my friends.